Praise the name of the Lord. All right, we're getting into the Word of God. I'm excited about the Word of God. Are you? Glory to God. So this morning, we're going to be going on... The series for this month is basically Thanksgiving and Joy. And the reason why we are emphatic on this at this time of the year is because it's very natural. There are two times that I'm aware of that people have... They they get into the mode of self-reflection, right? And... um, the two times that I'm aware of, I, I was aware of the second one when I got married. Um, because my wife, every birthday, is usually never happy because she's always self-reflecting. Looking, I, I never did that. Birthdays were, for me, just another day. But for her, she'll sit down, she'll reflect, she'll pray. She'll not be more spiritual on her birthday than any other day of the year. So I realized that some people, their birthdays are days where they begin to reflect on their life and think about and usually when people reflect on their lives they don't usually look at what they've acquired or what what is working they're usually looking at what is not working and the same thing goes for the end of the year as we gradually begin to draw curtains on the end of the year people begin to become very self-reflective they start taking account of okay i set goals or i had aspirations or i had desires and it's not working some of us are really putting all the energy and it begins to become a bit stressful, you know, and stress can be good, you know, stress is important because stress pumps adrenaline and helps you give your best. But when stress is too much, it can be deadly and dangerous. Praise the name of the Lord. So we are looking at the subject of how to move from stress to thankfulness because no matter how bad it is, there's something to be thankful for, no matter how bad. There's something to be thankful for. In fact, I believe that there are more things to be thankful for than there are things to be sad about. There are more things. You know, in the, in, in the service in Antonio when I was preaching this morning, some things came to mind. I, I, I know of people that when you see them, they look very okay. But they have a condition where every 10 minutes they forget everything. They look very okay, they are doing well, but every t- so you can meet them, they will introduce themselves. You have a 10 minute conversation, and after 10 minutes, they reset and they're like, Sorry, I don't know you. Who are you? Imagine what that has done to the person's life. You can't keep a job if you can't remember anything after 10 minutes. Um, Pastor Soji one time gave an illustra- not an illustration, an example of a man that was blind for six months, but eventually, you know, with medical science and all that. He regained his sight. They met Cobams. And he looked at Cobams and said, Cobams, I experienced what you have experienced for the whole of your life in six months. How are you coping? What Cobams said was very shocking. Cobams said, my own is still better. I have never seen before. I can imagine how you feel. You have lost something that you had. You know, it's better that you don't know. You, don't, you, you, you never saw. So you can't really tell what you are missing. But when you have seen for the better part of your life, and all of a sudden you can't see, it can be damaging. So you see, in whatever situation you are in, there is something to thank God for. Because it could have been worse. Guess what? Whatever situation you are in, you are not the one, are, there's no strength that you are, there's no effort you are making to make it, to make it, to, to stop it from getting worse. Whatever is not making that situation worse is God. Because left to the devil, his plans are much worse than what you are going through. So the restraint for the thing not to be worse is from God Almighty. Because if you, could have, if you had that power, you would make it better. You don't have the power. So if it's not getting worse, it's not by your strength. It's by God's strength. His power, his grace, and his might. So it's important for you to give thanks. It's important. And you see, when you are stressed out, you know, one of the things about stress is that stress is a feeling. Stress is self-imposed. Because what you are stressed out about, somebody else is playing in it. Are you aware? What is stressing you out? What is making you depressed or whatever it is? Somebody else is in a worse situation and the person is even dancing. 
enjoying, going to whatever, but you, you are stressed. You are telling God, I'm not doing it again. I'm not coming to church. You stop serving. You stop coming to church. You block your pastor. Block everybody. Cancel everybody. Because somebody broke up with you. There was a time I saw a guy. Was he a guy or... You know, yeah, a guy. I was in the car and he was on the road. And his right eye was somewhere here. The left eye was somewhere down. His face was, it was as though it was melting. I now said in my heart, somebody is saying that I don't have a relationship. At least you have hope for a relationship. In my mind, though, God can do all things. Who married that guy? At least you have hope. Somebody can still look at you and say, you are fine. I just don't dig you that much. Yeah, we are, there's no vibe. I, I, I don't feel anything. I, I, I can't feel anything. I'm not feeling it. We're not compatible. It's not you, it's me. <laughs> it's not about you, it's, it's, more, it's me. At least you can have such conversations. That guy was nothing to behold. So I was wondering, who, even, who can look past that? But your own face is intact. You are still wearing makeup. Can you put makeup on that? So, you just need to see some other people's predicament to understand that what you are stressing about is your perspective. It's self-imposed. I, I, I remember, I said this in the service, I remember when, I, when Pastor Bolaji announced when I was getting married, you know, some years ago. The way he announced it, I was not worried. I was like, what was he said, He said, oh, Pastor Kami is getting married on his that time. Thank God, finally, finally. <laughs> Finally, he's finally. I, I said, What is finally? You're making it look like we waited. Apparently, I didn't realize that. <laughs> I didn't realize that I had people worried on my behalf. You know, because <laughs> was talking to me, personal conversation, and he said, You know, you got married at an old. I said, Which old age? How old am I? <laughs> but guess what? There was no single time in that period that I was worried for myself. I was never worried. But I know people that are worried, that are looking at their lives. I wasn't worried, but people were worried on my behalf. And it was because of the perspective that I had. You know, what I always told myself all the time is that I would rather marry late and marry right. That's what I told myself. So, my goal was not to marry on time. My goal was to marry the right person. Yes, so the time did not disturb me because of the perspective that I had. Another situation that I had was, uh, I ate breakfast. I ate lunch. Dinner. Supper. Any other ah uh, that you can think of. Bruncher, brunch. And my first few, should I say, put on unquote, failed relationships made, devastated me. Because I, I, growing up, I was a. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So uh, I loved relationships. I loved marriage. I wanted to. So when I enter a relationship, I will carry it on my head like June 12th. So the first lady, Nail, I'll be sad, I'll be worried, I would cry. In fact, one of the relationships that I had, uh, <laughs> one of the relationships I had, I had to leave because then my mom and I were staying together. I had to leave the house to go and stay with my friend. Because my mom is, she's, she's not a man, she's five men in one, ma in one woman. So my mom is the kind of person that one of the relationships that I had, I was, we had a fight and I was unhappy. She saw me, she said, what's wrong with you? I was even thinking that being a mother, <laughs> she will understand and say it's one of those things. And I said, so, 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 so. She said, are, are you okay? Are you a man? <laughs> we didn't get up from there and go and play something. I will slap you. Move. So you can imagine when I now broke down, I, was, I had to leave the house because she can't beat me. <laughs> she can deck me for crying. You know, but I cried. I felt bad. Until one day I realized, 
And this is the power of perception and perspective. I realize that relationship is an experiment. The whole purpose of a relationship is to see if it can work or cannot work. So there are always going to be two options. It either works or doesn't work. And both options can be good. Glory to God. Because the whole essence is to see if you can live together with that person. Is it not better to find out in the relationship that you can't live together than find out in the marriage? Because it becomes more complicated after three children that you now know that you cannot live together. So when I understood that perspective that every failed relationship sometimes can be me dodging a bullet, I stopped crying. And I stopped feeling bad. And whenever I got a nail, it was okay. The nail was never a reflection of who I was. Because before, I used to think that, oh, maybe I wasn't good. No, no, no. It's the, because I also look at people and I say, no, I'm not sure this can work. So if that person looks at me that way, that's the person's decision isolated to the person. Yeah. It's the person's level of wisdom at that level in their life. Yeah. And the person has a right to their choice. The same way I have a right to my choice. So when I understood those dynamics, relationship became easy for me. In fact, the person I'm married now to, the person I got married to eventually, it was, I was chasing one other girl. So the first date, not chasing, because I didn't used to chase anyone. <laughs> so so I was, we, we went out on the first date. I, why am I saying this? This is not a relationship talk. But I'm using this to explain the power of perspective. So the first date, it was good. So I thought everything was fine. Second date, oh yeah, let's go now. I uh, have a meeting. Third date, I'm going to see my uncle. Fourth date, she just kept ghosting, ghosting. Then I had a friend that we were now just in. So I said, what's wrong with this girl? Like, I don't know, maybe you should try again. And we now started having very good conversations and talking and talking and talking. And, as I, and I said, wait, oh, why am I talking about this? You call Alpha. You see? If I was worried about what was going wrong in my life, I would, not see, I would not see what was good in my life that was going right. It took perspective to see that. Why are you worrying about the person that does not want you when there's somebody here talking with you every night on the phone, one hour, two hours? <laughs> Glory to God. So you see, don't drown yourself in the things that are going wrong. There are things that are going right. And the way you will not be stressed is because you can take your eyes off the things that are going wrong to look at now the things that are going right. Even if you are in debt, how much? I was listening to an interview because some people they are in debt. Some people they say, I'm in debt. How much is it? 500k. Hey, hey, how to that? Hey, how come it's like, God, why? 500k. I was listening to an interview, um, was Kostaris, and they were asking him his best, his worst business mistake. And he said that he met a man, I don't know if he knew the man before, but a little, all I can remember about the story was that he met a man that needed investments. He went to the man's place of business, whether it was a factory, I can't really remember right now. And he was impressed about what the man was doing. So he stood for the man to get a loan from the bank. I think eventually investigated and found that it was about 1.2 billion. So, as soon as the man got the loan, after a few months, he stopped hearing from the man. The bank stopped hearing from the man. The man had missed. So, the bank turned to Kostaris. The interest on that loan was 300 million naira every month. So, apart from the principal, the interest was 300 million naira. Guess what? Kostari's board members came together and said, wait, wait, wait. Did you sign any document with the bank? Were you the guy's guarantor? Kostari said, no. The bank just gave the man because they knew him. So the bank just said, oh, it's you that is recommending this guy. No problem. We'll give him the money because of you. So he didn't sign any document that made him liable legally. So they're like, oh, why are you worried now? You know, you know, when they said that, he now went to the bank. He said, please, where are the papers? He signed that I'm liable. What he said was that, he said, and this is a big lesson that I had learned. He said, his name is as good as his signature. 
He said his name is as good because that bank would not have given that guy that money if he did not step in. So he will be legally liable. That's, one of, that's the, the height of integrity that I have ever heard. But guess what? His wife never knew that he was in that issue. He would go home every day and just be normal. But he, was, he had to sell a lot of things, shares, sell to be able to um, clear up the debt. But he did not show to his, even his wife. But some of us, <laughs> I'm dying. <laughs> you now start practicing how to write suicide notes. <laughs> or you send videos to your family members and say, I want to kill my hand. You know? See, it's perspective. In life, it's perspective. As, see, the Bible says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. He says, now this is the victory that overcomes the world, your faith. So, how do you see yourself? Who are you? Glory to God. So let's get into some points. I just used that to introduce the message. Glory to God. So stress, a lot of stress can kill you. It's, it's a killer. It can kill your dreams. It can kill your body. Because when you have stress, it leads to a lot of... Proverbs chapter 18, verse 14. Let's just quickly look at that. I'm going to move with the speed of light. Then we'll start. We'll take it up from there. Proverbs 18, 14. Can I? Is it up there? All right. It says, the spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity, but a wounded spirit who can bear. So when... You have a strong spirit, no matter what is going on on your inside, no matter what is going on on the outside, because of the strength of your inner man, you can go through that thing. See, so what is most important is not what is going on on the inside, or on the outside rather, it's what is going on on the inside. I'll give you an illustration. You see, it is possible to superimpose what is inside of you on your environment. How do I know this? Hey, this is a big example. Jesus Christ and his disciples were on a boat. Then there was a storm. Ah, see, when you understand the message that the Bible is trying to pass across, you will realize why certain things were mentioned deliberately. The Bible says there was a storm, but that Jesus was inside the boat asleep in the middle of a storm. Now, the Bible deliberately points out that water was entering into the boat. What that means, and I'm sure that the boat those days were not so sophisticated that water is entering. It will not enter where Jesus Christ was. So what that means is that whatever, wherever Jesus was, there was water coming around him. But guess what? The water was not enough to wake him up. Because the peace that was on the outside, on the inside, was greater than the storm that was on the outside. So it took the disciples to come and wake Jesus up because they didn't have peace on the inside. They had the storm on the inside and on the outside. So they were worried. They now wake, wait, they went to wake Jesus Christ. As they woke him up from the bed, Jesus Christ having peace on the outside. He said, oh, why did you wake me up? Oh, ye of little faith. Don't you know that when I'm in your boat, even though there's a storm on the outside, but as long as the priest of peace is on the inside, you can take from inside and put outside. And Jesus went and said, peace be still. And what was inside came and changed the situation outside so it's not what is on your outside that matters it's what is on your inside so what you need to guard against is not trying to stop what is on the outside is to sit down and make sure that there's peace in your inside and once there's peace in your inside you can steal the storm on the outside so the bible says the spirit of a man can go through strong problems. He can calm the storm. But it says a broken spirit who can help. A broken spirit who can help. One of the things we must, we must make sure is that no matter what we go through, don't let it break your spirit. Don't let it break your spirit. 
Make sure there's peace on your inside. That's what the Bible says. It says, guard your heart with all diligence because out of it flows what? The issues of life. Glory to God. You see, stress also leads to bad decisions. When you are stressed out, you're going to make the wrong decision. An example is Moses in the book of Exodus. Or in the book of Numbers 20, 10 to 11. I'm not going to read it because of time. But Moses was so stressed out with the children of Israel that God gave him an instruction and said, speak to the rock. But because Moses was stressed out, he, in his anger, he took his staff and hit the rock. And because he did that, even though water still came out for the children of Israel, but he lost his part in the land of Canaan. God said, because you did not, you failed to honor me before the children of Israel, you will not enter the promised land. So stress can make you take the wrong decision. Not follow the instruction of God. Or be impaired when God is trying to talk to you. You are angry. You do something else. In some cases, you might see results. But you might miss something bigger. And that's why you need to have put a control on stress. Of course, excessive stress leads to depression and suicide. Suicidal thoughts. You know, you see people committing suicide. I heard about one famous person committing suicide. And, some, and you know, what's amazing to me is that everybody that talks about that person, he's a, he's a nice person, jolly person. I'm like, where did the suicide come from? The person that really touched me most was um, Robbie Williams. I said, the guy that makes the whole world laugh is depressed. How? Praise the name of the Lord. But sometimes you need to be strong on your inside. It's important. You need to go beyond the peripheries of life and get deeper with God so that your core is strong. Somebody that amazed me in the Bible that had this same suicidal behavior because of stress or because of what was happening around him was Elijah. 1 Kings chapter 19 verse 1 to 4. Very funny story. Elijah had just called down fire from heaven. He had killed 400 prophets of Baal. He had done one of the greatest feats that any prophet has done. You see, because calling down fire from heaven is not easy. Glory to God. If it is, you can try it when you get home. It's not easy. You can't just do that. How many prophets have that on their CV, on their record, have called down fire from heaven? Not too many. No, I'm not even sure. I, I think it's probably the only one. But then, Jezebel sends him a, a message and said... May the gods do unto me and much more if you are not like one of the prophets. And you can imagine, I just called down fire from heaven, you are threatening me. That's my first reference. I just said, Did she not hear? Please, can you go and send that back that I just called fire from heaven? You are now threatening me. But Elijah did the strangest thing ever. He ran away. Do you know it's not even the king that threatened him, it was the queen. Praise God. But he ran. Now, what made it worse was that when he ran away, when God met him at that cave, the first thing he told God is that, God, kill me, take my life. I'm like, for what? So, there is a way, even after victory, problems can come. But if you are still not strong at your core, you can break down. Yes. Glory to God. And do you know because of that, Elijah lost his opportunity to continue to be a prophet in Israel. Many people don't know. Do you know that after he said that, in the next verse, or preceding verse, God told him to go and anoint Elisha. And Elijah was still alive. Yeah. He was still well. He was, he, 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 there was no plan. He just said, that, kill me, take me away. No, no, no. God now said, it's okay, you want to resign. I, 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 we have accepted your resignation letter. He said, go and anoint Elijah as the next prophet of Israel. Praise the name of the Lord. So you can lose opportunities just because you are stressed out. You can, you can behave irrationally in the face of opportunity. So of us, we are stressed at work and all what is going on is for your promotion. But you circumvent the process halfway because you are stressed out. You now resign. Next, you now find out that they wanted to promote you. But you resigned. Let me tell you, see, adversity is important to build character and strength. See, God does not cause adversity, but God uses adversity. Look at the life of Joseph. 
God gave him a dream. You, he said, he gave him a vision. The first vision, his brothers bowed. He said, ah, all of you will serve me. His brothers were angry. The, God did not stop there. God now added his mother and his father. Joseph now went and, you know, told all there and everybody. You would have thought that the next thing, oh yeah, what's the next thing? So now that you have said I'm going to be head of my family. So I think the next thing that was going to now happen is that you now, you know, you just, I'll just blow first. You know, I just have my own money. I move out of the house. Then after that, I start my country. Then I, I employ my father. I employ, you know. But the next thing was that he was found himself in a pit. From the pit, he went to Potiphar's house. In Potiphar's house, where he thought that, okay, the glory is showing. The glory is showing. Conspiracy again. The wife conspired against him. They threw him inside prison. You know, one of the things about Joseph is that if you have gone through what Joseph has gone through, you, can, you, you are not permitted to notice people that are sad. For you to ask somebody in prison, why are you sad? is because you are happy. And you don't expect them to be sad. Yes. Abby, can a sad person see a sad person and say, why are you sad? When you say sad person, you say, you are sad, Abby, we are sad, we are all sad together. Yes. We are all sad, you see? We are all sad together. Even if somebody comes, you for, comes to you, meet you for comfort and say, my brother, if you know what's happening to me, what's happening to you? If I tell you what's happening to me, you know that what's happening to you is small. I'm just coming back from a lot. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. But Joseph saw people that they were not taken away from their father's house. They were not sold into slavery. They had been working in the palace for the better part of their lives. He said, said what's wrong with you? Let me tell you my story. Sit down. He said, what's wrong with you? Why are you sad? How? There was something on his inside that was greater than what was around him. Something was there that made him joyful even in prison. Even as a slave. A convicted fellow. Something was inside of him telling him that see, a better day is coming. Such that when the, when the, the, the butler was leaving, he said, when you get to Pharaoh, remember me. He still had the, the energy, the drive to still ask for help. Because he believed in the dream. Despite the circumstances. And what happened? Guess what happened? Tell me. Who knows? The butler forgot him. At least you'd have thought that with this one. Ah, he's, remember first day? Explain. Be, 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 who is Joseph? The prayer is first day, nothing. Second day, nothing. One month, nothing. Two months, nothing. Seven months, nothing. Eight months, nothing. One year, nothing. Eighteen months, nothing. Two years after, even the butler had forgotten. And guess what? It was a great thing that the butler didn't come back. Because what would Pharaoh, what would Joseph have been? Oh, he did that. Okay, bring him. You can add him to one of the staff. Let him, you know, let, let's, let's just bring him out. Let's, let him just, you can head the, the circle of magicians. You just be there interpreting dream. Yes. But because when God promotes you, yes. not even the person that helped you can know the extent of the promotion. I don't think the butler thought that Joseph will eventually become his boss. Just think about Pharaoh because I'm, I just think about Potiphar because Potiphar was the king's guard. That means as they were promoting Joseph, he was there. The person that, just, just oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Just think about it because Potiphar was the king's guard. So he was there in the court when, when he said, hey, 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 you have become prime minister. He says, only in the throne will you be greater than me. Nobody will lift a hand or a foot, including Potiphar. So, see, all you need to do is trust God. The Bible says his thoughts towards you, they are not of evil but of good. To bring you to an expected end and a good future. Paul now says it better. He says God is able to do all, God is, uh, unto him that is able to do all things. Uh, is, uh, 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 God that is able to do things, um, what, that is able to do above what you can ask or think exceedingly. So, I love that scripture because God doesn't just listen to what you are asking for. He's looking at what you are thinking about. So, you can be walking behind, beside the house in Banana Island and say, I like this. And God is listening to it. And say, write it on our list. Write it on our list. Exceedingly above. So, your thoughts matter to him. Your words matter to him. See, when God is in your corner, don't be, dis don't be dismayed. When you have God, don't be dismayed. When you have God, you have all. God looked at Abraham and said, I shall be your shield and your exceedingly great reward. He looked at the Levites. He says, I've, I've, I've given them land, but for the Levites, I am your portion. 
He said, I've given all the other people land. He says, but you deliver it. I am your portion. <laughs> when Abraham looked at Lot, he said, let's stop fighting. He said, look at the land. Choose. Lot went, did a very good quantity survey, got people to, deal, we got consultants. He said, let's look at this thing. This is a, this is a free change. Just look, let's look at it very well. He said, okay, let's choose the Sodom and Gomorrah area. You know, because it's looking luscious. It's looking great. After he left, God said, Abraham, you have given your own. Let me give my own. He says, as far as your eyes can see, look to the north, look to the south, look to the east, look to the west. He says, as far as your eyes can see, I give it to you as a possession, including where Lord chose. I give it to you. He thinks he's a landlord, but he's a tenant. Glory to God. That is why when God was going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, you know, he had to tell Lot to leave and told Lot not to look back. He said, Lot, forget everything. Don't look back because nothing belongs to you. But guess what? As Lot was leaving, Abraham was far away looking at everything that was going back because he had the right to look. He was the landlord. No matter what was going on in Sodom and Gomorrah, it still belonged to Abraham. So when Lot was giving an instruction to turn his back and forget it, Abraham was far away looking at the smoke rising from Sodom and Gomorrah because he's the landlord. God gave Sodom and Gomorrah to him. So one of the things, one of the things I, I, I always sit down and remember, if God be for me, hey, if God be for me, if God be for me, Bible says, who can be against me? He says, you can do nothing against the truth, uh, but for the truth. Uh, so even when people are conspiring against you, they don't know that God is working it out for your good. Glory to God. But guess what? Your attitude matters. If you don't have the right attitude, you will miss the opportunity. You will miss the day of your visitation. Because you will look down on it. You will say, this is another year again. They've come again. This is my year of something. These five years, they've been saying my year of blessing. My year of the star. My year of moving forward. My year of... Every year they say it is not my year of anything. But there will be one year. Hey, Kabaskobaya. There will be one year. Don't be like Jacob and say, the Lord was here, but I did not know it. Don't be like Jacob. Don't miss. Bible says, and, and Jesus shed tears on Israel because they had missed their day of visitation. Be like the woman of the issue of blood. After 12 years, you are still kicking. You know, that's amazing. 12 years, you have spent all. You have done everything. You now hear that Jesus is in town. You didn't need anybody to preach to you. You tell yourself. You see, up until that time, nobody had done that kind of miracle where they would touch the hem of Jesus Christ and get a miracle. In fact, she got the miracle without Jesus Christ's permission. Jesus was on his way to the house of Jarius. Jarius came to meet Jesus and said to Jesus, let's go, come and heal my daughter because she's about to die. So Jesus' focus was Jarius. But there was a woman that did not need to go and meet Jesus. She just said, hey, hey, if I just touch the hem of his garment, I shall be whole. She pressed through the crowd. She pressed through the barricade. She got to Jesus and she touched him. And as she touched him, her faith drew virtue. Even without the permission of the master, Jesus had to stop and say, hey, somebody has stolen something from me. I did not permit virtue to go out. But virtue has left me. He said, somebody has touched me. The disciples did not understand. He said, master, people throng you because there are different kind of touches. <laughs> you can come to church and you have a touch and your touch is like, ah, let me see Pastor Balaji and take selfie with him. You know, that's your turn. Oh, hey, Pastor Balaji, don't smile at me. Oh, Pastor, but you can come to church and say, you might even be at the back of the hall. And you are sitting and you are looking at the service. And you are saying, there is a word for me in this service. There is an encouragement for me in this service. I don't even need the man of God to lay hands on me. I can just look at him and draw out virtue. Hallelujah. I can draw out virtue from him. And Jesus looked at him and looked at her and did not say, hey, bring the virtue back. How can you take it without my permission? He looked at her and said, your faith had made thee whole. Your faith had made thee whole. Guess what? Jairus was still waiting for Jesus to get to the house. Whereas somebody had taken it 
right there and then. Glory to God. Your attitude matters. Your attitude matters. Don't let bad news change your perspective. Bible says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of my faith. Looking unto Jesus. He's the writer of my destiny. He's the author of my life. Even if bad news comes, he's going to finish it where? Glory to God. Glory to God. So how? How do you move from stress to thanksgiving? Number one, I've already talked about it, but it's adjust your perspective. Let's look at something that really touched me. Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 14, verse 6 to 7. We're going to read this. I want to show you something. How many of us remember the spies of Egypt that were sent, the spies of Israel that were sent into the land of Canaan to spy the land? You know, 10 of them came back and gave bad news and said that, oh, we have seen them, oh, the children of Canaan, they are the children of Akan, they are giants. He says, we are grasshoppers, and we became grasshoppers in their eye. So therefore, we were grasshoppers. We cannot go there, you know. And you remember that Caleb was the one that, the Bible says, and Caleb stealed the people and began to talk that we are able to possess this land. We are able to take it because our God has said it. Look at what um, Caleb said from verse 6 to Joshua. So this was Caleb now talking. He was, he was much older. And he was talking to Joshua. And you can see the perspective. He said, Then the children of Judah came unto Joshua in Gilgal. And Caleb, the son of... Pardon me, I'm mother this name. Jephine also. Let's call it that. I can't... Eh? Jephine, I've mothered it. Don't worry. We know. We get the points. He said, The, the Kenesite. And said unto him, Thou knowest the things that the Lord God said unto Moses, the man of God, concerning me, and thee in Kadesh um, Baner. Next verse. He now said, 40 years old was I when Moses, when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me to Kadesh Baner to spy on the land. And he said, What? I brought him what? Word again as it was in my heart, not as I saw. Hey, he went to the land. <laughs> To spy the land, but he didn't come out with news as he saw. He came out with news of he came up, came back with news as he was in his heart. So as he was going there, all he knew is that we are conquering this land. I don't even know we are going to spy. Let the devil be there. Let all the archangels of the enemy living there. We are taking this land. So he didn't need factual information. He had revelation in his heart. So when he came back to Moses, he didn't give Moses the fact. He gave Moses the truth in his heart. He says, I spoke according to what was in my heart, not according to what I saw. Some of us, the reason why you're stressed and depressed, you are looking at what you are seeing. You are not looking at what is in your heart. Or rather, you are not putting the right information in your heart. Rather than looking at what is around you, look at what is in the word of God. Looking unto Jesus, the logos of God, the author and the finisher of our faith. Praise the name of the Lord. See, even at the age of 80, you could see still Caleb saying, give me the mountain. He said, I'm 80 years old. But my strength is as though I was still 40. He said what? Give me the mountain. What is in your heart? What are you meditating on? What word of God? Bible says, Jesus, the Bible says, the, um, God spoke to the children of Israel. He said, take my word. He said, put it on your doorpost. Bind it on your hand. Put it on your forehead. Speak it in the morning. Speak it in the night. Speak it in the evening. Speak it when you're going out. Speak it when you're going in. He knows why. Because he, see, what will give you victory in life? Is what is inside you, not what is around you. What is inside you? Your attitude matters. Your perspective matters. How you see life matters. Number two. So I've, I've actually said it. Surround yourself with the word of God. Deuteronomy 6, 9. Deuteronomy chapter 6, 6 to 10. That's what I just quoted for you. Or I paraphrased for you. Number three. This is a practical thing. Distress. Rest trivialize some things in your life. You have to be selectively trivial about certain things in your life. You can't carry everything on your head like June 12. Sometimes we hold on to things. I'm not married. I'm not married. All my mates are married. All my mates are married. I always say, oh, what's going on? Hey, hey, I don't have a job. I don't have a job. I was talking to a man that for seven years is unemployed. Married man. Some people, only have just six months unemployment want to die. 
trivialize some things. Praise the name of the Lord. See, one of the things I try to do in my life is I like to trivialize some things. I can't just mention them because you think I'm, I'm, I'm stupid or I'm serious. But I just trivialize some things. One of the things I trivialize the most is reputation. I'm not talking about reputation when it comes to good. Reputation, someone say, eh, eh, see, the, see the kind of shoe you are wearing. Say, eh. Or see the kind of, eh. I'm like, at your age, you should be wearing, uh, I don't understand. Who determines what age that you should be wearing what? Where's the book? Don't just say, eh, ah, see the kind of car you're driving now. Ah, ah, by now, at this stage of your life, at this present stage, at this stage of your life, you should be driving. I love the way Pastor Saji said the one day. He said they don't catch late comers for in wealth in the wealthy club. They don't catch late comers in the wealthy club. You don't get you don't become come a millionaire and they say, no, it's already too late. You can't you are anywhere you enter. Praise the name of the Lord. So don't put yourself under undue stress. You will get there. Just keep doing what you have to do. You will get there. Glory to God. And finally, believe things will be better. See, you must believe that the, you must keep your dream alive. The Bible says, and Jesus endured the cross. He despised the shame. Why? For the joy that was set before him. What joy is before you? What dream is before you? Are you seeing yourself in that wedding gown? See it every day. Dance every day. Know that you'll be married. Know that you'll carry that child. Know that you'll be promoted. Know that your business will stand up again. Believe because all things work together for good. For they that love God and are called according to his purpose. If God be for you, nothing can be against you. Praise the name of the Lord. Believe that 2023 will be far better than 2022. Praise the name of the Lord. Can we celebrate Jesus this morning? Can we celebrate Jesus this morning? Can we do better than that and celebrate Jesus? Wow! Glory to God. Glory to God. Look at your neighbor and say, I see you in 2023. Far better. Far bigger. Far stronger. Far wiser than you are right now. Celebrate Jesus one more time. Glory to God. You may please be seated. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Heavenly Father.